Hey there, scholars. Uh, this week uh, for Novel Studies, we are going to be looking at another short story from our Junior Great Book Series 4. Um, we're going to be reading the story Tuesday of the Other June. Um, since this is a short week, um, today I'm going to read you the story. I would love it if you could follow along with the PDF copy. Um, and then uh, tomorrow we're going to go straight into vocab. Then Thursday is our Socratic discussion questions, and Friday we will have our Socratic discussion. All right, so let's jump on in. So this story um, is going to be about a girl who has a bully problem. Um, so be thinking about while reading, how would you deal with a bully that would make you proud? How would you do it in a non-violent way? Tuesday of the other June. Be good, be good, be good, be good, my Junie, my mother sang as she combed my hair. A song, a story, a croon, a plea. It's just you and me, two women alone in the world. Junie, darling of my heart, we have enough troubles getting by. We surely don't need a single one more. So you keep your sweet self out of fighting and all that bad stuff. People can be little-hearted, be, but turn the other cheek and smile at the world. And the world will surely smile back. We stood in front of the mirror as she combed my hair, combed and brushed and smoothed. Her head came just above mine. She said when I grew another inch, she'd stand on a stool to brush my hair. I'm not giving up this pleasure, she said laughing, her long honey laugh. My mother was April, her mother had been May, I was June, and someday, said my mother, you'll have a daughter of your own. What would you name her? January, I'd yelled when I was little. February, no, November, my mother laughed her honey laugh. She had little emerald eyes that warmed me like the sun. Every day when I went to school, she went to work. Sometimes I stopped what I was doing, she said, lay down my tools and stop everything because all I can think about is you, wondering what you're doing and if you need me. Now, Junie, if anyone ever bothers you, I walk away, run away. Come on home as fast as my feet can take me, I recited. Yes, you come to me. You just bring me your trouble, because I'm here on this earth to love you and take care of you. I was safe with her. Still, sometimes I woke up at night and heard footsteps slowly creeping up the stairs. It wasn't my mother. She was asleep in the bed across the room. So it was robbers, thieves, and murderers. Creeping slowly, slowly, slowly towards my bed. I stuffed my hand into my mouth. If I screamed and woke her, she'd be tired at work tomorrow. The robbers and thieves filled the warm darkness and slipped across the floor more quietly than cats. Rigid under the covers, I stared at the shifting dark and bit my knuckles and never knew when I fell asleep again. In the morning, we sang in the kitchen... Bill Grogan's goat was feeling fine. Ate three red shirts right off the line. I made sandwiches for our lunch. She made pancakes for breakfast. But all she ate was one pancake and one and a cup of coffee. Gotta fly. Can't be late. I wanted to be rich and take care of her. She worked too hard. Her pretty hair had gray in it. And she joked about someday... I said, I'll buy you a real house, and you'll never work in a pot factory again. She, such delicious plans, she said. She checked the window to see if they were locked. Do you have your key? I lifted it from the chain around my neck. And you'll come right home after the school, home from school, and I won't light fires or let strangers into the house. And I won't tell anyone on the phone that I'm here alone. I finished for her. I know, I'm just your old worrywart mother. 
worrywart just means that someone who worries so too much. She kissed me twice on each cheek, but you are my June, my only June, the only June. She was wrong. There was another June. I met her when we stood next to each other at the edge of the pool the first day of swimming class in the community center. What's your name? She said in a deep, growly voice. June, what's yours? She stared at me. June. We have the same name. No, we don't. June is my name. And I don't give you permission to use it. Your name is Fish Eyes. She pinched me hard. Got it, Fish Eyes? The next Tuesday, the other June again stood next to me at the edge of the pool. What's your name? June. Wrong. Your name is Fish Eyes. June. Fish Eyes, you are really stupid. She shoved me into the pool. The swimming teacher looked up, frowning from her chart. No one in the water yet. Why do you think this other June mistreats June so bad? Why do you think she's mistreating her? So later in the locker room, I dressed quickly, wrapped my wetsuit in the towel. The other June pulled on her jeans. You guys see the bathing suit Fish Eyes is, was wearing? Her mother found it in the trash can. She did not. The other June grabbed my fingers and twisted. Where'd she find the bathing suit? She bought it. Let me go. Poor little f stupid fish eyes is crying. Oh, boo-hoo, boo-hoo. Poor little fish eyes. After that, everyone called me fish eyes. And every Tuesday, wherever I was, there was the other June. At the edge of the pool. In the pool. In the locker room. In the water. She swam alongside me, blowing and huffing knocking into me. In the locker room, she stepped on my feet, pinched my arms, hid my blouse, and knotted my braids together. She had large square teeth. She was shorter than I was, but heavier, with bigger bones and square hands. If I met her outside on the street carrying her bathing suit and towel, she'd walk towards me, smile a square, friendly smile. Oh, well, if it wasn't, isn't fish eyes then she'd punch me blam her whole solid weight hitting me why why do you think uh june takes all this abuse from the other june i didn't know what to do about her she was training me like a dog after a few weeks of this she only had to look at me only had to growl i'm gonna get you fish eyes for my heart to slink like a whipped dog down into my stomach. My arms were covered with bruises. When my mother noticed, I made up a story about tripping on the sidewalk. My weeks were no longer Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and so on. Tuesday was awful day. Wednesday was bad day. The Tuesday bad feelings were still there. Thursday was better day. Friday was safe day. Saturday was good day and Sunday was too soon day, and Monday. Monday was nothing but the day before awful day. I tried to slow down time, especially on the weekends. I stayed close to my mother, doing everything with her. Shopping, cooking, cleaning, going to the laundromat. Aw, sweetie, go play with your friends. No, I'd rather be with you. I wouldn't wa look at the clock or listen to the radio. They were always telling the date and time. I did special magic things to keep the day from going away, wrapping my knuckles six times in the bathroom door six times a day, never ever touching the chipped place on my bureau. But always I woke up to the day before Tuesday, and always, no matter how many times I circled the warm spot on the living room rug or counted 25 cracks in the ceiling, Monday disappeared, 
and once again it was Tuesday. The other June got bored with calling me fish eyes. Buffalo brain came next, but as soon as everyone knew that, she renamed me Turkey Nose. Now at night, it wasn't robbers creeping up the stairs. It was the other June coming to torment me. When I finally fell asleep, I dreamed of kicking her, punching, biting, pinching. In the morning, I remembered my dreams and felt brave and strong. And then I remembered all the things my mother had taught me and told me. Be good, be good, be good, and it's just us two women alone in the world. Oh, but if it weren't, if my father wasn't long gone, if we'd had someone else to fall back on, if my mother's mother and daddy weren't dead all these years, if my father's daddy wanted to know us instead of being glad to forget us, oh, then I would have punched the other June with a frisky heart. I would have grabbed her arm at the poolside and bitten her like a dog she had made of me. One night, when my mother came home from work, she said, June, listen to this. We're moving. Alaska, I thought. Florida. Arizona. Someplace far away and wonderful. Someplace without the other June. Wait till you hear this. We're going to be caretakers. Troubleshooters for an eight-family apartment building. 56 Blue Hill Street. Not janitors. We don't do any of the heavy work. April and June, troubleshooters. Incorporated. If a tenant has a complaint or a problem, she comes to us, and we either take care of it or call the janitors for service. And for that little bit of work, we get to live rent-free. She swept me around the, in a dance. Okay, you like it? I do. So, not anywhere else, really. All the same, maybe too far to go to swimming class. Can we move right away? Today? Give me a break, sweetie. We've got to pack. Um, we've got to pack, do a thousand things. I've got to line up someone with a truck to help us. Six weeks, Saturday the 15th. She circled it on the calendar. It was the Saturday after the last day of swimming class. Soon, we had boxes lying everywhere, filled with clothes and towels and glasses, wrapped in newspaper. Bit by bit, we cleared the rooms, leaving only what we needed right now. The dining room table sta staggered on a bunched-up rug. Our bureaus inched toward the front door like patient cows. On the calendar in the kitchen, my mother marked off the days until we moved, but the only day I thought about were Tuesdays, awful days. Nothing else was real except the too fast passing of time, moving toward each Tuesday, away from Tuesday, towards Tuesday. And it seemed to me that this would go on forever, that Tuesday would come forever, and I would be forever trapped by the side of the pool, the other June whispering buffalo brain, fish eyes, turkey nose into my ear, while she ground her elbow into my side and smiled her square smile at the swimming teacher. And then it ended. It was the last day of swimming class, the last Tuesday. We had all passed our tests, and as if in celebration, the other June only pinched me twice. And now, our swimming teacher said, all of you are ready for the advanced clash, which starts in just one month. I have a sign-up slip here. Please put your name down before you leave. Everyone but me crowded around. I went to the locker room and pulled my clothes as fast as possible. The other June burst through the door just as I was leaving. Goodbye, I yelled. Good riddance to bad trash. Before she could pinch me again, I ran past her and then ran all the way home, singing, Goodbye, 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 good riddance to bad trash. Later, my mother carefully untied the blue ribbon around my swimming class diploma. Look at this. Well, isn't this wonderful? You're on your way. You might turn into an Olympic swimmer. You never know what life will bring. I didn't want to take more lessons. Oh, sweetie, it's great to be a good swimmer. 
But then, looking at my face, she said, No, 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 don't worry. You don't have to. The next morning, I woke up hungry for the first time in weeks. No more swimming class. No more bad days and awful days. No more Tuesdays of the other June. In the kitchen, I made hot cocoa to go with my mother's corn muffins. It's Wednesday, Mom, I said, stirring the coffee. My favorite day. Since when? Since this morning. I turned in on the radio so I could hear the announcers tell the time, the temperature, and the day. Thursday for breakfast, I made cinnamon toast. Friday, my mother made pancakes. And on Saturday, before we moved, we ate the last slice of bread and cleaned out the peanut butter jar. Some breakfast, Tilly said. Hello, you must be June. She shook my hand. She was a friend of my mother's from work. She wore big hoop earrings, sandals, and a skirt a dazzling, as dazzling as a rainbow. She came in a truck with John to help us move our things. John shouted cheerfully to me, So, you're moving, an enormous man with a face covered with little brown bumps. Uh, he Was he afraid his voice wouldn't travel the distance from his mouth to my ears? You looked, you looking at my moles, he shouted, and heaved our big green flower chair down the stairs. Don't worry, they don't bite. Ha, ha, ha. Beside him came my mother and Tilly balancing a bureau between them, and behind them I carried a lamp and the round flowered Mexican tray. That was my mother's favorite. <clears throat> She had found it was a uh, at a garage sale and said it was close to foreign travel as we could we would ever get. The night before, we had loaded our car, stuffing into bags and boxes until there were barely there was barely any room for the two of us. But it was only when we were in the car when we drove past Abdo's grocery where they always gave us credit when I turned for our last look at our street. It was only then that I understood we were truly going to live somewhere else, in another apartment, in another place mysteriously called Blue Hill Street. Tilly's truck followed our car. Oh, I'm so excited, my mother said. She laughed. You think we we're going across the country? Our old car whizzed up a long, steep hill. Blue Hill Street. I looked from one side to the other, trying to see everything. My mother drove over the crest of the hill. And now, ta-da, <clears throat> our new home. <clears throat> Which house? Which one? I looked out the window, and I saw, and what I saw was the other June. She was sprawled on the stoop of a pink house, lounging back on her elbows, legs outspreading her jaws working on a wad of gum i slid down in the seat but it was too late i was sure see she had seen me my mother turned into a driveway next to a big white building with a tiny porch she leaned on the steering wheel see that window there that's our living room window and that one over there that's your bedroom we went into the house down a dim cool hallway in our new apartment the wooden floors clicked under our shoes. My mother showed me everything. Her voice echoed in the empty rooms. I followed her around in a daze. Had I imagined seeing the other June? Maybe I'd seen another girl who looked like her. A double. That could happen. Ho, oh, yo, where do you want this chair? John appeared in the doorway. We brought in boxes and bags and beds and stopped only to eat pizza and drink orange juice from the carton. June's so quiet, you'd think she'll adjust all right, I heard Tilly say to my mother. Oh, definitely. She'll make a wonderful adjustment. She's just getting used to things. But I thought that if the other June lived in the same street I did, I would never get used to things. That night, I slept in my own bed with my own pillow and blanket, but with floors that creaked in strange voices, in strange voices and walls with cracks I didn't recognize. 
I didn't feel either happy or unhappy. It was as if I were waiting for something. Monday, when the principal of Blue Hill Street School left me in Mr. Morrissey's class, I knew what I had been waiting for. In that room, full of other strange, full of strange kids, there was one person I knew. She smiled her square smile, raised her hand, and said, "She can sit next to me. She can sit next to me, Mr. Morrissey." Very nice of you, June M. Okay, June T. Take your seat. I'll try not to get you two Junes mixed up. I sat next to her. Um, she pinched my arm. Good riddance to bad trash, she mocked. Now June has to sit next to other June every day. I wonder what she's going to do. I was back in the Tuesday swimming class, only now it was worse because every day would be awful day. The pinching had already started. Soon, I knew on the playground and in the halls, kids would pass me grinning, Hiya, fish eyes. The other June followed me around during recess, that day droning in my ear. You are my slave. You must do everything I say. I am your master. Say it. Say, yes, master. You are my master. I pressed my lips together, clapped my hands over my ears, but without hope. Wasn't it going to matter? Uh, wasn't it only a matter of time before I said the hateful words? How was school? My mother said that night. Okay. She put a pile of towels in a bureau drawer. Try not to be sad about missing your old friends, sweetie. There will be new ones. The next morning, the other June was waiting for me when I left the house. Did your mother get you that blouse in the garbage dump? She buttered me, shoving me against a tree. Don't you speak anymore, fish eyes? Grabbing my chin um, in her hands, she pried open my mouth. Oh, ha. I thought you lost your tongue. I went to school. I sank down in my seat, my head on my arms. June T, are you all right? Mr. Morrissey asked. I nodded. My head was almost too heavy to lift. The other June went to the pencil sharpener. Round and round she whirled the handle, walking back, looking at me. She held the three sharp pencils like three little knives. Someone knocked on the door. Mr. Morrissey went out into the hall. Paper planes burst into the air, flying from desk to desk. Someone turned on a transistor radio, and the other June, coming close, smiled and licked her lips like a cat sleepily preparing to gulp down a mouse. I remembered my dream of kicking her, punching her, biting her like a dog. Then my mother spoke quickly in my ear. Turn the other cheek, my Junie. Smile at the world, and the world will smile back. But I had turned the other cheek, and it was slapped. I had smiled, and the world hadn't smiled back. I wouldn't run I couldn't run home as fast as my feet could take me. I had to stay here at school. And in school there was other June. Every morning there would be the other June. And every afternoon and every day, all day, there would be other June. She frisked down the aisle, stabbing the pencil in the air towards me. A boy stood up on his desk and bowed. My fans, he said, I greet you. My arm twitched and throbbed as if the other June's pencil had already poked me through the skin. She came closer, smiling, Tuesday smile. No, I whispered, no. The word took wings and flew me to my feet in front of the other June. No, it flew out of my mouth until into her surprised face. The boy on the desk turned toward us. You'd said something, my devoted fans? No, I said to the other June. Oh, no, 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 no more. I pushed away the hand that held the pencil. I wonder what caused her to finally stand up to the other June. The other June's eyes opened, popped wide like the eyes of somebody in a cartoon. It made me laugh. 
The boy on the desk laughed. And then the other kids were laughing too. No, I said again, because it felt good to say. No, 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 no. I leaned towards the other June, putting my finger against her cheek. Her cheek turned red. She squawked something. It sounded like, you. And she stepped back. She stepped away from me. The door banged, the airplanes disappeared, and Mr. Morrissey walked to his desk. Okay, okay, let's get back to work. Kevin Clark, how about it? Kevin jumped off the desk, and Mr. Morrissey picked up a piece of chalk. All right, class, you stopped and looked at me and the other June. You two Junes, what's going on there? I tried it again, my finger against his chest. Then the words, no more, and she stepped back another step. I sat down in my desk. June M., Mr. Morrissey said. June turned around, staring at him with big, eyed cartoon look. After a moment, she sat down in her desk with a loud slapping sound. Even Mr. Morrissey laughed. And sitting in my desk, twirling my braids, I knew this was the last Tuesday of the other June. All right, tomorrow, um, think about any questions you had in the story and share those um, with us during our Zoom meeting today. Um, and uh, we'll be working on vocab tomorrow.